Today we're going to be introducing the Small Business Health Relief Act, which is designed to reduce the costs for small business imposed by Obamacare. It will do that in a variety of ways that we're going to discuss here and will be significant in helping small businesses to reduce their health care costs, which the Obamacare legislation increases. I want to start by thanking the Senator for his leadership on the Small Business Health Relief Act, which is designed, as he just said, to make insurance more affordable and to expand coverage. This act uh, moves the ball forward in terms of achieving key goals for small business. It begins by lowering health insurance premiums for all Americans by eliminating the pass-through tax on health insurers, which is estimated to increase insurance premiums by nearly $5,000 over the next decade. So you're looking at annual savings here of three to $500 a year. We commend Senator Kyle for his focus on small business and helping them and their employees with relief from the destructive fees and taxes and mandates that were enacted just a year ago in the name of health care reform. Now I'd like to call up Dan Danner, the President and CEO of the National Federation of Independent Business. Dan? The number one reason why small businesses are reluctant to invest and create jobs is uncertainty. And a major part of that uncertainty is over the future cost of health care. By repealing the employer mandate, by repealing the health insurance tax, and by repealing the new restrictions on flexible savings accounts. This legislation will go a long way toward adding predictability to the future cost of health care for small business. Earl Hall runs hometown office supplies and printing in Bordentown, New Jersey. The cost is the bottom line on this. There's just no question that we're, we're being forced with the Obamacare to operate, or we're being forced into an insecure position of trying to operate where we don't know where this thing is going. The only thing that we can see as small business people is costs going up. And I know on an individual level, when push comes to shove, I'm either going to have to lay somebody off or go out of business if this projects the way we're seeing it. Uh, I'm on the leadership council with NFIB, and I represent a lot of other uh, businesses who are uh, larger and even some the same size as mine. And the feeling is, is universal across the, across the field that uh, this is not something that helps us in small business. It appears to be designed to hurt us. We're unhappy about it, and we thank Senator Kyle for taking our interest to heart and coming uh, up with a uh, reasonable uh, reliable solution. If we're talking about jobs in this country, then we've got to make sure that the people who provide the jobs can stay in business. And this Small Business Relief, Health Care Relief Act is one of the tools to make sure that our small businesses can stay in business and thereby hopefully at least keep the people they have on their payroll and, and ideally hire more people than that. So I hope that you'll continue to uh, be in touch with NFIB and the United States Chamber of Commerce in understanding how why all of this is so important. We certainly agree with the Senator that anything that we can do to, to help the future cost burden for small business, we're going to keep fighting for it. And the insurance tax directly hits them. It's a tax only on fully insured plans, which is where most small businesses uh, purchase their health care. And it is going to flow right to the bottom line and, and be, as Bruce indicated, three, $500 a year uh, for family plans that uh, is a direct add-on. So anything that we can do to try to try to help lower the cost burden, which is the, the number one concern still today, it was before legislation passed. We don't think the legislation adequately addressed it, and we'll keep fighting for ways that we can help small businesses afford health care.